What is up everyone? My name is Miguel aka The Liberal Thrifter and welcome to episode 3 of my new YouTube series where I pontificate uneloquently about my love for thrifting, reselling on eBay and everything related to that. Thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. Before we get started, I kind of just want to clear something up about what I'm trying to do here. Um, all of this, like the light, the, the production, the editing, the production, yeah. Um, all of that kind of stuff is my attempt to kind of make you guys my competition. Like, I don't mind. It's, it's fine. Some people are very, like, guarded with their trade secrets. They're like, oh, you can't teach people that. You know, you're, you're going to kill your own golden goose. And it's like, no, there's plenty for everybody. Um, I'm not one of those people that's, like, mind guarding. Um, it's fine. I'm going to share it with you guys because other people shared it with me. So why not pass it along, right? Um, but all of this, the, the stuff I'm doing, the showing you the bolos, the showing you what sold for me. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that if you're watching this, you fall into one of two categories. You're either an experienced reseller who's just kind of looking for new niches, new bolos, some ideas, just maybe something in the background while you're working on some of your business. Um, that That's that's great. You're more than welcome to anything that I know of. Um, the, other, the other category that I think some of you might fall into is people who are new to this, people who are thinking about going thrifting and going on eBay and selling stuff on eBay and seeing what it's like. And those are... Those are the people that I think I, I probably can help the most because I don't know everything and I'm not going to call myself some kind of guru and I'm nothing like that. I don't make my living off of this, but I know enough. So if you guys have any questions for me, if you have any anything that you, you're you stuck on, message me. Send, me. send me a DM on my Instagram. Send me, uh, you know, put a comment on the YouTube video. I will try my best to help you, and if I can't help you, then I'll at least point you to someone who can. Uh, but yeah, the point is to help you guys learn new stuff, increase your range, increase your, broaden your reselling horizons. So let me help you. I hope this comes in handy, and uh, yeah, let's let's see what what uh, what we can learn this week, right? I had a great week thrifting this week. Um, I had a nice little mix. I went to one really good independent, a Salvation Army, and a couple of Goodwills, and I picked up some really good stuff. So uh, to start off with, I'm going to show you 15 items, 15 items that I've recently picked up. It's going to be a little bit different because I'm, I've heard you guys' suggestions. I know that I show you guys a lot of clothing, and that's mainly because I am a mainly clothing reseller but um, I'm going to try to kind of show you guys a little bit different categories as well and hopefully you can see other things besides clothing that you can kind of branch into also hey, you're probably going to see me change a little bit maybe get scruffy and they wear a different shirt that's because I filmed this over a couple of days because I had a uh, I did run out of time but uh, yeah, all the same information is there. So I just want to let you know for continuity reasons that yes, I'm wearing a different shirt. The first thing I'm going to show you is this lot of 11 model car kits. This was just one of those good timing situations. Uh, new Bing came out full of some plush and these. I started scanning the barcodes with my eBay app and they were almost decomping in the 25 to $35 range. One of them counted up in the high 50s. So I just... Two dollars each, as you can see, and I said just grabbed all of them. Um, it's you know it's really really good luck. Always always look at the new carts bins when they come out. So if you're there for any considerable amount of time, a lot of times there'll be like an announcement that says, "Hey, a new cart is coming out. Come check it out." You want to go look at it. Um, I know it can be a little embarrassing. It's like, oh, everybody's looking at me going for the new cart. Huh? You know. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about what other people are thinking when they see you. 
not even worth thinking about just go go look at them because then you get first pick at everything and you can run into a nice little lot um a lot of these are Ravel's, some um amis uh can't remember which one comes out for 50 i'm gonna have to double check but either way two bucks each it's one of those can do situations this next item is a pair of SAS shoes. Uh, SAS stands for San Antonio shoes. And not the most aesthetically pleasing shoes in the world, but they are designed to be really good for people with orthopedic issues, with foot problems, with uh, problems walking. They are very much a walking shoe. Uh, this model is called Roamers. And I paid $7 for them. I should be able to get about 40 for them. This next item is a, a two for one. It's the pair of t-shirts that I found. This is a pair of Affliction Bamboo. So the gimmick is that they're made with bamboo and cotton. Very gaudy, very loud. Not my style, but hey, that's someone's style out there. Uh, these also have like, you know, obviously the, the graphic there, like a female form. And then some sort of a, I want to say a gold thread, really sewn into there. Um, so I found this one. So unfortunately, they weren't the same size. Otherwise, I allowed them together. This one was a 3XL. And I also found right next to it a 2XL. Same kind of shirt. Same bamboo. This one's just a 2XL, different graphic different color um i think i paid i paid four dollars each and i think i should be able to get somewhere in the 35 to 40 dollar range for each of them fiction like i said before it kind of went in goes in waves and styles but there's always some young person out there who thinks that these are the greatest thing so this next item is a pair of sorel women's ankle boots the model is called Addington. New with tags. So I did pay up for this. I paid $20. These are $200 retail. Um, so I'm pretty sure that I can get somewhere in the $120 range. These are listed already. Got a couple of watchers at $120. Might have to lower the price a little bit, but $20. Um, yeah, don't be afraid to pay up if it's a luxury brand that you know that you can sell for a lot more. This next item is a vintage embroidered sweater from the TV show Cheers. Uh, this actually, it's on, it's on a Fruit of the Loom tag. Um, and this actually caught my eye a little bit because of just how good the quality is on the embroidery. It's got the, it's 1996, so true, you know, vintage there. And, you know, it's just one of those things that uh, someone who's a fan of the show is going to really dig this. And maybe if they're making a pilgrimage to Boston, they're going to want to wear this. I uh, paid $6. Should be able to get somewhere in the $40 to $50 range. This next item is a antique pitcher. Um, it's, let's see if we can tell there, uh, Foley Bayons. And the thing with this one was, um, I usually go down the aisles with mugs and things like that, because you never know when you're gonna find like a nice little Starbucks tumbler or some of those, you know, Starbucks uh, city ones. Those are like really easy. Everybody kind of knows that those are worth looking up. And this kind of caught my eye because it just looked so old. I thought it might be like an antique and uh, looking doing some research yeah it looks like it's from the early 1900s uh, late 1800s maybe I paid seven dollars for this I'm thinking I can get somewhere around the 80 to 100 dollars so when you go down certain aisles if something catches your eye even if you're not fully trained uh, you don't have a fully trained eye just look it up worst thing is that's just going to happen is that you're going to learn something new. I learned about 
this by doing all the research on it. And now I have a little something extra in my repertoire. So yeah, uh, keep an eye out for kind of antique glass, antique vintage um, pottery, things like that, that, that can be worth good money. This next item I'm gonna show you is a another Disney item. Uh, you know, I love Disney, but it's a uh, one that I haven't shown you guys before. This is a hipster Mickey uh, from a shop or a Disney affiliated shop called Wonderground Gallery. And it is very much a hipstery kind of store, very expensive retail. But uh, yeah, if you ever see like a weird hipster looking Mickey and you see this, look it up, pick, pick it up pretty much. It's almost all of their items are a uh, resale for a decent amount. I paid four dollars for this and I should be able to get about 30 or 40. So this part one of the bowl. The next part I'm going to show you is uh, uh, the next new tag I'm going to show you is this Mickey Unlimited. So that's another Disney branded tag that you can kind of put away in the old steel trap there. There's a vintage single stitch t-shirt. So that's how you know it's a little bit older. It's like a paper doll clothes kind of t-shirt. And I uh, paid $2 for this one. I should be able to get around 35 to 40 for this one as well. So there's two new labels for Disney stuff that you mean I may not have shown before. And there you go, you have a little something extra for your repertoire. This next item is a, a toy actually. It's a Matchbox SpongeBob SquarePants. What is it called? Adventure set. It's brand new in the box. And uh, you know, it's just one of those scanned barcodes, see what it comes up with. And apparently this is really rare, especially new. Uh, paid $8. Um, and I think that I should be able to get somewhere in the $80 range just because it's actually really rare and especially rare to have it new and to have this little side piece there that that's kind of the, what it confers a lot of the value that it has that and that's the very limited um, toy piece so when you're going the toy section scan stuff that looks interesting and you never know when you're going to run into something great <clears throat> This next item is a vintage 1990s <laughs> Beverly Hills 90210 t-shirt. This is single stitch. Again, a sign of how it's probably going to be a little bit older than, I would say it's older than 20 years. Uh, if it, more, only 20, 25 years if it's single stitch. Um, this one, the tag is completely faded out. But I looked up some comps and it, I think it was a Beverly Hills 90210 tagged one. Uh, this one is from, I believe, about 97 and it's got the the spelling, like the spelling entertainment little thing there. Uh, I should be able to get somewhere around 40 or $50 and as usual, I paid $4 for this t-shirt. This next item that I'm going to show you is a pair of limited edition Captain Marvel Vans. And the reason I wanted to show you guys this is because I actually have done really, really well with themed Vans. Vans, Vans are a little bit annoying in that they do not have, like most shoes, they do not have model numbers really. The model number is a generic model number that just will tell you if it's a high top or something like that. It's not really that helpful. So it's really hard to find comps sometimes for a black, white pattern high tops. You'll find dozens of them. But when you find a themed one, that's going to make it much easier for you to find a comp and much easier for you to find someone who's interested in these. So anybody who's a big fan of Captain Marvel, the Captain Marvel movies, all of that good stuff, they're going to try to find this pair of shoes. It happened, I've been doing my research, it is a limited edition, which makes the value even better. Paid $8, and I think I can get about 60 for it. 
This next item is a Primitive, which is a skateboarding company. Sailor Moon collab, like a pastel tie-dye kind of hoodie sweater. It's a women's uh, size large, women's large. And collaborations usually will do really well because again, you've got people who like the Primitive skateboard brand, people who are into really Sailor Moon stuff, and people who really like tie-dye. Tie-dye, for some reason, is kind of making a little bit of a comeback. Uh, a pastel tie-dye, very unique, very visually appealing. And uh, yeah, I expect this to sell pretty decent. I uh, paid $7. Should be able to get it about $40 to $50. This next item is actually three pairs of Ray-Ban. Uh, models RB5180, all three found at the same store. So I'm pretty sure that someone had, it was, these all came from one person. All really good quality, all with the, the flexible hinges, which kind of show you that they're legit Ray-Bans, all really nice, not tore up. So I paid up a little bit for these. I paid about an average of $5 each. There were different prices. Two of them came with cases, which if you're gonna sell uh, eyeglasses like I do, cases are invaluable, cheap cases are invaluable to find because when you ship them out, you need cases to protect them when they're shipped. And you know, you can include in your listing, will include generic case. If you have a matching one, like a high-end pair, and you want to match it with, uh, with the same brand, so let's say this was a very expensive, it's not a very expensive pair of Ray-Bans, it's about $30 to $35 pair. But if this was a really, really high-end one, like a $100 pair of Ray-Bans, I could add a little bit of value by including a Ray-Ban branded case on this. So you can pay $5 average for each of these, and with a couple of free cases thrown in, should be able to get somewhere around the $35 each for these. <clears throat> this next item is a pair of Noble Pink Women's Shoes. I think these are 5.5s. And Noble is an expensive brand, like ridiculously expensive for what it is. These are kind of um, CrossFit shoes, workout, workout shoes. So. People go through them really fast. These are in excellent condition, actually, barely anywhere. Um, I did pay $10 for these, but I thought it was worth it because I should be able to get somewhere in the $50, $60 range. So CrossFit shoes, these, and Reebok CrossFit shoes. Definitely keep an eye out for those, especially in good condition. People do buy them used because they're so expensive, new. And as long as they're in good condition, you will have a, a buyer probably. This next item is a Roar. You see that there? I mentioned it before in my soles, but now I have a live one for you. This is a size XL. This is a, a denim looking shirt. And I want to show you guys the detail on this. The embroidery on this is actually really intricate. It's got these little lapels side patches, um, the buttons are, are metal, um, but usually what's, what these are going to have is a big thing on the back, a very big gaudy looking embroidery, very loud, very attention getting, and some people like, like that. So keep, this is a good brand to look out for. The bigger size is the better. Smaller sizes aren't going to take longer to sell. So just keep that in mind. As long as you don't pay up too much for them, you should be fine. I uh, paid $5 and I should be able to get somewhere in the $30 range for this. And then the last item I have to show you uh, here is this pair of brand new with tags, five fingers shoes. Now, there are some that are kind of a generic brands and those not the, not the greatest pickups, but as a little 
bowl here if you see some with vibram soles vibram soles are the thing that makes the difference on these types of shoes cheap ones will not have vibram soles you see one with this these are popular people go in the water with them water sports surfing all that kind of stuff i just got lucky on these new with tags paid up for these paid 11 dollars, but i should be able to get somewhere in the 60 dollar range and that's it for the pickups obviously i had a lot more but these are the the interesting ones the ones i think you can learn a little bit something from uh next i'm going to show you 10 so 10 items that sold so the first item is this oakley mountain division large corduroy jacket it's like a green military style uh, when i saw it I, I knew something special and it turns out there's actually a, a really collectible market for these I paid up for this one, paid $10, but as you can see, sold for $100. Uh, Oakley jackets, definitely keep an eye out for those. Oakley hood, hoodies and sweaters are nice. They're like bread and butter. They can they can get a decent amount, but Oakley jackets, those are, are something that you're going to definitely want to keep your eye out for because they can be worth a good amount of money. And depending on the style, can have people just really coveting them. This next item is actually one of the one of my favorite brands to find. It's a brand called Dragonfly, and this uh, brand does a lot of themed shirts. So I've sold some like Jack Daniels. I've sold some with you know guitars with like skulls. Very '90s look in a lot of them. This particular one's more like a Hawaiian looking one. This art style is uh, called Sailor Jerry, and you may have seen it. You know, it's very popular with the rockabilly crowd. And uh, yeah, this is something that, that definitely gravitates to the eye. Uh, paid $6, um, I can't remember exactly how much I, paid, I got for it. I'm sorry, the, the, the video cut off there. I think it was 40, 30 or 40, somewhere in that range. But you definitely keep an eye out for Dragonfly. Dragonfly um, brand shirts the gaudier the theme the better this next item is a t-shirt for a edm artist called rl brian it's a it's a trap music dj i guess so check for some trap music it's all right i guess but you know some people really love their edm uh paid four dollars and as you can see sold for 40. so again this is one of those niche artist that has a following it didn't take that long to sell either it took like the two or three weeks and big fan of their song and there it went out the door and four dollars in my pocket this next item is a uh, pair of nike force zoom trout six baseball cleats uh those nice red uh colorway size 12. this was a ross pickup and uh Again, Ross, uh, if you look for certain things at the Ross, you as shoes especially, you're, you're usually going to find a deal. Uh, this particular one, I paid about $16, $17 for these pair of shoes. Uh, but as you can see, sold uh, for $70. So you just, it doesn't even have to be clearance for it to be a really good deal. And I just got lucky finding these. And yeah, it's a, definitely Ross Marshalls definitely somewhere a good place to go this next item is a vintage 90s axo power sports a uh, large motocross jersey it's very loud very unique it's something that somebody riding motocross bmx uh, would have liked back in the 90s uh, it's very colorful it's pretty rare too especially because people just trash these really really badly they fell in their bikes and shirt just got shredded so it's it's fun when you find a, a one uh paid six dollars and as you can see sold a big sold for seventy dollars this next item is a pair of eyeglasses uh roberto cavalli these are a kind of a, a cat eye so when you see them go like that um these are jeweled model six seven six seven it's a brown it's not the prettiest color but someone out there wanted them uh, paid $40 and sold for 30 
Next item is a pair of women's swim trunks. So these are Patagonia, obviously a very popular brand, well-known brand. Patagonia swimwear does, does have some demand on it. Paid $4 and sold for $25. Uh, this next item is another one of those I'm really happy that I gave it a chance. I took a chance on it. It's a 30 Seconds to Mars custom Puma jacket. And the thing about this one is it's not an official jacket. It's it's just some fan made, so some fan sewed on their sewing machine, the patch on the back and the patch on the front and called it good and wore it to a 30 Seconds to Mars concert or something and then they decided they didn't want any more gave it to a thrift store that's where i came in um fan made stuff if it's in good quality if it's decently made will appeal to other fans so just because it's not official don't don't put too much of it think of it like if i was a fan of this person of this band would i want to wear this and somebody did and i thought they would I was paid seven dollars and sold for 45. This next item is a luxury brand as is Burberry Golf uh, XL polo shirt that um, that kind of brown platy looking thing that's called a tartan check and it's kind of got it on the collar. It's also got some minor details, a little embroidery on the um, placket, I believe it's called, and the buttons, of course, uh, to have the, the branding on them. Paid seven dollars and sold for thirty. Plain, other other than the brand, other than that little round thing, it looks really, really plain. So sometimes it'll slip past a uh, thrift store checker and they won't price it up. And you come in, you know what it is, you can figure it out, and you can make some money off of that. And the last item I'm going to show you today is this pair of Adidas Predator, a men's size ten. Model V23524, soccer cleats, football cleats, guys. These things are worth surprisingly amount, a surprising amount of money. Just plain looking football cleats. If they're good brands, if they were endorsed by the right person, someone's going to want them. Paid up for a little bit for these, paid $12, but as you can see, sold for 90 happy to pay that up when I know I can get a good amount back and that's it for the sold so now on to the tip of the day and I'm going to recommend that you guys kind of try to adapt to your area and what I mean by that is if you want to try to find what your area has a lot of and learn that niche so for example if you live in Denver, Colorado, then you're going to go to a thrift store and you're going to find a lot of snow jackets. You're going to find a lot of winter sports accessories, um, sweaters, cold weather things, right? So you want to learn that niche because there's going to be a lot of that merchandise in your area. On the opposite end, if you live in San Diego, California or somewhere coastal and beachy, you're going to find swim trunks, you're going to find water sports stuff, you're going to find Hawaiians, you're going to find casual kind of beach clothing, beach stuff. That would then be a good thing to learn. It, you adapt to your surroundings, you adapt to what there's a lot of in your particular area. If you're in a working class town, then there's going to have be a lot of workwear. There's going to be like uh, car hearts and steel toe boots and just it's going to be different things. If you're in an area, I don't know, I'm trying to think of some, think of it, think of any area. If you're in Texas, you're going to find a lot of Western shirts. You're going to find some belt buckles, maybe some, some fancy belt buckles. You're going to find cowboy boots. Think about your area. Think about what your area will have a lot of and then try to learn teach yourself that particular niche you know maybe you're in an area that has a lot of fancy businessmen then you learn suits you learn dress shirts you learn dress shoes just 
adapt to what you what is around you guys it's really really important it's going to help you a lot in your sourcing to know by sight this is good this uh, is not not great of what there's a lot of in your area oh another one i forgot if you live in an area with a lot of older people a lot of people go there to retire arizona florida etc you're gonna want to learn your mid-century modern your antique stuff stuff that is going to end up at thrift stores when those people don't need it anymore be it that they pass away be it that you know their kids are helping them you know downsize their estate whatever whatever the situation is that's another one to to know that if there is a, an older generation there you're gonna find older things and it's a good idea to learn the antique market the vintage market that's that's going to be really really helpful to you also not just that also adapt to what's in your specific radius as far as stores go so for example if you live in an area that doesn't have a lot of thrift stores but maybe they have a lot of rosses marshalls burlington's that's the kind of stores that people like in that area learn that go for that learn for that because you're going to have a lot more options a lot more sources for merchandise and inventory based on what they have so now if there is a lot of thrift stores in your area you're going to want to go for that if there's if you're in an area close to where they do um auctions police auctions just county auctions things like that if you're in an area where those things are plentiful and they're running every weekend or every other weekend, you're gonna wanna try to go to those places to source, take advantage of what is in your area. It will help you out. And now for the content creator of the week, um, I've been talking a lot about, you know, Ross, Marshalls, Burlington, that kind of place. So I'm gonna recommend you try to find some YouTubers uh, that, that specialize in that. The one I'm, I've learned a lot from is uh, the real Ross Boss. And, you know, he just, he teaches you a lot of stuff. Um, he shows you a lot of his sold items. Um, I'm sorry, a lot of his pickups, excuse me. But it's not just one category. He goes through the clothing, he goes through the shoes, he goes through accessories, hats, belts, things like that. So you, you can go through an entire Ross with a little armed with a little bit of knowledge if you if you check out his videos so i'm gonna recommend you give him a chance some people have said that you know they find him a little bit off-putting um yeah i guess it depends on the mood you're in and, and the style you like but for the knowledge that he's giving to everybody out there I, it's invaluable and i really want to give him a shout out about this so check him out Think it was be going to be down in the description and that about does it for me thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate it and yeah it looks like these are going to come out then every two weeks so yeah that's, that's a respectable amount so hopefully i'll see you guys in two weeks thanks uh please make sure to like subscribe it really helps out the channel i really want to try to push it out there and hopefully get more subscribers and get to our first mini goal of 250 and i can't do that without your help so i really appreciate anybody who's already subscribed and and please help me out and uh yeah that's it i will catch you on the next one be cool